Okay. You ready? Mm -hmm. Hello everybody, it is Elaine and this is my sister, Anna. <laughs> and today we are going to be talking about eight books that are really popular on TikTok and we're going to be telling you what we thought of them. Just so you guys know, this will have some spoilers, probably a lot of spoilers, so if you see a book that you don't want to be spoiled for, just skip a little bit, pause it, mute it until you see the next book, but just a heads up. So to kick things off, we're going to start out with... <laughs> what was that? The Selection by Kira Cass. Anna, you want to tell us what you got? Bad. <laughs> okay. I didn't like America. Why? She's annoying. America is very annoying. She's probably the most annoying main character in a YA book that I have ever read. She's very whiny and she's very indecisive. And it's very annoying. Also, I hate the love triangle trope. I didn't I didn't used to hate it. I think I liked it in middle school. But now it's just over. I loved the selection in sixth grade, but now not so much. Also, also they have horrible castle security. Like why are people just breaking in all the time? They literally own a castle. Can they not afford guards? I was pissed when Celeste died. Why? They just shot her in the back of the head. Like, <laughs> they have to make it at least dramatic. Maxon had so many better options in America. Like, why did he pick her? I feel like she should do a good one. And she's like, no, I'm gonna do this one. Okay. The next one that we're gonna talk about, well, that I'm gonna talk about, is from Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I don't think you've read this book, right? I absolutely did not like this book. I actually DNF'd it around page 200. And I was literally reading it on vacation, so I had nothing to do but read. So it's not like I just got busy or something, like I just did not like it. I didn't really like... <laughs> Kitty! I didn't really like the main character. Our cat is like playing right into the camera, so... But I didn't like the main character. I didn't like the way that she spoke, which I guess comes down to writing style, because I didn't really like the way that the main character narrated things. And I didn't really like how things were explained. I feel like there was way too much, way too fast with like information and like the world building just wasn't there for me. I don't really understand why this is so popular. I guess there's a good romance, so like let me know if I should keep reading to get to the romance, because like I'm a sucker for romance, but like I don't know. I just didn't. Is it there like smutty scenes later? Like why is this book so popular? because I just did not like it. And yeah, it just mostly comes down to the writing style and the narration style. I just didn't like it. And I did quit pretty early on because there's like 600 pages and I only read 200, but yeah, I just didn't like this. All right, next we have... <laughs> Daughter of the Pirate King by... Trisha Levenseller. All right, Anna, so what'd you think? I really liked it. I read it in like a day. Mm -hmm. I loved the main character. She Can I cuss on you? She's so badass <laughs> and witty and sarcastic, and those are my favorite characters. And you said it was really plot driven, right? Yeah, so like the plot was really good. What about the love interest guy? Yeah, I liked them. I also loved how like they were enemies, but. Like enemies <laughs> to lovers? Yeah. It was really good, so. Next we have Legend by Marie Lu. I read Legend a really long time ago and I only read the first one and to be honest I barely remember it which shows that like I didn't think it was that great because I- it, It's terrible. Dang, Anna's just shots fired. I stopped reading it like halfway through. But you finished this one though, yeah, right? Yeah, I stopped reading the second one. Yeah. I just get annoyed how they switch sides like so many times. Like alliances? I liked June. She was badass. I liked how she was working for uh, Republic, but I didn't really like Day. Why? I don't know. It's just kind of annoying. Yeah, and you didn't kind like the goody goody. And you didn't like the dual POVs either, right? No, I don't really like dual POVs because, like, I like reading my favorite character the whole time. I don't really remember anything about Legend, and I never finished the series, so that probably shows I didn't like it very much. And I don't want to read the ending part because that's terrible. Yeah, she googled the ending of the trilogy, so... No, I always just, like, read the last page <laughs> of the book. <laughs> so you know what happened? Yeah. And I was like, hi, I'm June, because he got amnesia or some shit, so... <laughs> that's terrible. Like, what's the point of reading that just for him to end up with amnesia? <laughs> Next we have Shatter Me by Tahara Mafi. This is the old cover. The 
weird girl cover. <laughs> I read this also a long time ago. It's weird that all these books are like popular on Book Talk now because they were popular when I was in like middle school, which was like eight, seven, six. How many years ago was I in middle school? It's like weird that they're coming back because I read this also in middle school. I did not finish this series. Not because I didn't like it, because I did really enjoy this one. I think I just, like, just stopped for some reason. You've actually just read these, so what do you think? I really like it. I love Juliet and Warner. They're my favorite couple. I liked Adam at first, but then, like, the third book, I didn't like him. He was a douche. Did you like the plot? Like, did you like how she, yeah. when she touched people, they died and stuff? Yeah, I think that's really cool. Yeah. The third book kind of confuses me, because, like, her power, she can like move people now and stuff like that. It's weird, but it's cool, I guess. <laughs> She's badass, so I love that. Yeah. And originally, Anna, you were only gonna read like the first three, but now you want to keep because uh, Shatter Me was like originally just supposed to be a trilogy, but then she, the author went and wrote like a bunch more, right? Yeah. Anna, you were originally only gonna read the first three, but now you want to keep going, right? Yeah, because like I don't know, she only has control of like one sector so like I want to see her take over the world so yeah okay so the next book that we're going to talk about is Red White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston um so I listened to this on audiobook and it was probably the best audiobook I have ever listened to it deserves all the hype this book is amazing absolute hell yes it is deserves all of the hype. I'm obsessed with it. It was the cutest thing ever. I don't know, it just felt like real. And like I know it could not be real, but it just like felt like it was real. And I just thought it was like super cute and I kept waiting for like shit to hit the fan. And I like the way that like shit hit the fan. Like I think it like made sense. I don't know, it was just so cute. And I just loved the main characters. I loved Henry and Alex. Like, I just want to hug them and, like, hope everything in the world works out for them because I think they are some of the cutest characters ever and they deserve the world. And, like, it was just so cute. And I really liked the way that their relationship progressed. Like, I think they had a lot of great character development and the author did a really great job showing how their relationship progressed instead of it just being, like, they were in love. Like, it showed how they kind of didn't like each other and then like they became friends and then they became more than friends and I really liked that progression and how it kind of builds over time and turns into this great romance. I literally was like crying in the car, we were in a car ride and I was just like crying listening to it and I was like this is so beautiful. The part that made me cry the most was the scene where like after they're outed because of the emails where there's like pride parades everywhere and like protests and like support and I was just like sobbing like that is the sweetest thing in the whole world like that was what made me cry the most like just the support that they got I was just like that is so sweet well overall red white and blue blue 10 out of 10 5 out of 5 amazing deserves the world next we have throne of glass by Sarah J Mass this is another book that I read in middle school before book talk even existed I love this series it's probably my favorite series Really? Yeah. Why? I love Aelin. Even though you won't finish, what's it called? Because she's not in it. Tower of Dawn. Yeah. That makes me so mad. I'm about to just skip it and go to Kingdom of Ash. Just read the plot summary. Yeah. Get the gist of it and then skip. Throne of Glass is really good. It's kind of weird because when you take Throne of Glass and you compare it to like the later books in the series, they're very different. Like this almost has like I mean, it has everything to do with the rest, but it also has nothing to do with it because it's like an assassin competition. But then like the later on in the series, it's like political and like all this crap. It just goes from like an assassin competition to something just completely different. Giant like, battle against the dark. <laughs> yeah. It goes from like point A all the way to Z. It's just the progression of the series is like really unique. Sarah J Mass, I personally love her writing style. I think she's really good at world building. Now I haven't read Akatar yet. Some people say that the world building like isn't really there, but personally like Crescent City is one of my favorite books in the entire world and I think the world building there is just elite and I just love her characters and the romance and I love how she combines like high fantasy and really badass like fighting and 
female empowerment but also with like romance and sex and stuff like I think she's just a really good writer and it's cool to see how far she's come from Throne of Glass. Aelin's probably my all-time favorite character she's so badass and funny and sarcastic and I love her and Rowan actually team not Kale Kale, Kale. <laughs> I was actually a team him at first not see Dorian. I like Dorian more because I like I have a thing for princes mm. oh, he's in the uh, Tower of Dawn book like I'm gonna read a whole book about him <laughs> I do love her tragic background. Aelin's? Yeah. Her background story. I do think Sarah J. Mass makes her characters, like, really... Is it three-dimensional? I don't know. She makes them have cool stories, and I feel like she plans out her characters really well. And that's why the dual POV for her works. I mean, it's still third person, but it's kind of dual POV. Like, she kind of switches between heads of the third person, if that makes sense. And I think that works so well for her because she really has developed each of her characters and, like, made... Each character have their own unique backstory and their own personalities. Like I think she's really good at that. So Except I think. Except when it's not an Aelin's point of view, that makes me mad. Yeah, Anna will only read an Aelin's. You literally. That's why you don't like Legend or anything because you can't handle a dual POV. Yeah, because I want to just read about my main, my favorite main character. But sometimes you gotta read the other characters I don't to care like about know them. the story. No. But like if you don't. Well, I do like Man in Blackbeak, too, so I like her. So the last book we have to talk about is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. This book is one of my all-time favorite books in the entire world because of just the way that it is written. This is the most beautifully written book I have ever read in my entire life. Just reading the lines made me want to cry. Like, I remember I called my mom just to read her one sentence because... It is just so beautifully written. It feels like a song or I don't even know, but V.E. Schwab is an amazing writer. And it's just so lyrical and like, I don't, I don't even know. It's just beautiful. Like just the way that it's written. Like it's just lyrical and just magic. I also think that the plot is really unique. I've never really seen anything like this before. Like obviously I've read things or watched things where people can live forever, but the whole forgetting her thing is kind of unique. And I love the way that she was able to be remembered through art and music. And I just love how it kind of like celebrated the arts and creativity and making your mark through those things. The way that you remember people can just be like a song that reminds you of a memory from 20 years ago. I just think that that's a really beautiful concept. Also, I loved the characters. Forget the demon devil's name. Does he have a name? I can't remember. I read this a little bit ago, but like, I loved him. When he was introduced, I was like, oh no. But he actually kind of does suck, but also like, he was really sexy, like you have to admit, he was really sexy. I just really liked this and I love the way that like, she talks about like, you just meet the people that you need to meet. And I don't know, and I love it being in so many different cities, like Paris and London and New York. I just think that's really cool. Kind of combined everything I love. If you're an art history major, or even just like an English major, like this is the book that you will love. I was writing an article for this newspaper that I'm a part of in college, and it was like getting your friends books for Christmas. I wrote like for the artsy friend, this is the book that you should buy them. Like for the, your vintage friend that like spends time at the art museum and wears like berets and has like always the most artsy outfit on and could like stare at a painting for 20 hours. Like this is the book for them. I think this book does deserve all the hype. I've seen a lot of people hating on it on TikTok. And so many TikToks was like, books not look the hype, Addie LaRue. And like, that's just wrong. And those people are immature and just want to read the selection. And those people who are still in their selection phase are just not ready for Addie LaRue. Because if you compare the way that the selection is written to this, that is like comparing some shitty person to Taylor Swift. This is like um, the Taylor Swift of books. Amazing. Beautiful. This is like... Amelia this Taylor is Swift. <laughs> <laughs> one whole day. <laughs> now, one whole day to champagne problems. That is the selection. To Addie LaRue. The people who are hating on this are just not ready for this yet and they need to mature a little bit. Sorry if that's rude. It's just the truth. That is, that's it. So that is our video. These are the eight books plus Red, Bright, and Royal Blue that we have seen all over Book Talk that we um, gave you our opinion on. So let us know what you think and if there's another book that you think does or doesn't deserve all the book talk hype. And also no hate to anyone. You love what you love and you don't have to justify your opinion to anyone because you have the right to love whatever you love. And just because we say it sucks doesn't mean that you can't love it. We just think it sucks. So, I'm, I'm talking just the selection fans. Or legend. Or the, or the legend fans or the From Blood and Ash fans. Like, you know what? If you love that shit, you're allowed. And more power to ya because that's awesome and proud of you for reading at all. 
but just yeah we just didn't like them and that's our opinion and you can have yours all right well that's it guys so thank you so much for watching and i hope that wherever you are you are having a wonderful day hopefully you're spending it with a nice book um thanks for hanging out with us and i will talk to you guys later bye